this second video is going to have a practice practice on a bunch of these simplifying remember this is something you do not want to use a calculator on okay so this is something a practice a skill that i need you guys to uh, be able to master okay and so here's the first one i want to show you and it's off a worksheet the square root of 98 i'll say this is problem number one all right, so I have my list of perfect squares up there, and then I have that property that we're going to be using repeatedly. One goes into all numbers, so we don't care about that. And now my task is to find, if there is one, the largest number on this list that goes into 98. And a lot of students will first look at this and say, oh my goodness, that's overwhelming. I mean, how, how am I supposed to figure that out? Especially if they don't know their times tables. And yeah, that can be relatively tough, but if you stick with it, you can limit the number of things that you look at. For example, do you agree that 64 is bigger than half of 98. Half of 100 is 50, so half of 98 has to be bigger than that. So you can eliminate all the numbers that are 64 and bigger. You can also eliminate 25, okay? And so what does that leave us with? 49, 36, 60, 9, and 4. That's five things that you need to check, okay? Our task is to get the biggest one. We get the biggest one, the work is a lot easier. So take a look at this 49, huh, that's suspicious. Half a hundred is 50, 49 times two is 98. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 49 times two. Break it apart, this is the property, the square root of 49 times the square root of two. Now what is the square root of 49? Well, that's seven times seven. Seven square root of two is my final answer because the only perfect square root goes into two is one. Okay, second example. Square root of 40. Okay, think of the numbers that you can eliminate on the list. 25 times 2 is 50, since that's bigger than half of 40. There's no way it can go into 40, so you can eliminate all these. And so we're down to just 4, 9, and 16. Well, I think you know that 4 goes into 40, correct? So I can rewrite this as a square root of 4 times 10 equals square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 10. Now, square root of 10 is awful large for a radicand. In video 1, I said this is the radicand. Let's just check real quick. Are there any numbers besides 1 that goes evenly into 10? And no, there isn't. So, yeah, that is my simplified answer. Okay, next one. Next one is the square root of 72. Okay, well, let's see. Eliminate 1, 49 times 2 I know is 98, so I can eliminate all these. So I have this group of numbers right here. There's five of them. 25, it can't be because multiples, multiples of 25 are only ending 5 and 0. How about 36? 36 times 2 is 72. 36 times 2. So I write this as a square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 36 is 6. 6 square root of 2 is the answer. Anybody else getting ready to eliminate this step right here? Once you get skilled at it, you will. Last one. Square root of 125. Hmm. Ends in a 5. Okay. If none of these numbers go into it, I'm just going to say it is simplified. But I'm wondering about 25. That ending in a 5 drew my eyes immediately. And 4 times 25 is 100, so 5 times 25. So I can write this as square root of 25 times 5. Break it apart as the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. Square root of 25 is plain old 5. And 5 root 5 is my simplified answer. We'll be practicing that on the boards. Um, we also will take care of this issue of what happens if you don't pick the largest number on this list. Does that mean you can't get the right answer? And the answer is no, it just takes a little bit longer to do it. But we'll talk about that as we practice in class.